Hi, I'm Eric, and this is Adventures in Golf. For this episode, we traveled to the 68th parallel to play the northernmost Lynx course on planet Earth. Pretty good spot for it, huh? Adventures in Golf has given me the opportunity to travel around the world, meet some great people, and of course, check out amazing golf courses. Sometimes the trip is as easy as jumping on a plane and grabbing a cab to the course, but the adventures that I've come to love the most are the ones that take us off the beaten path and reveal that the adventure is, in fact, the journey. This latest episode is a prime example as I'm traveling to the most remote place Adventures in Golf has ever been to located on one of the Lofoten Islands off the coast of Norway, in the small town of Hove, is Lofoten Links, a course unlike any I've ever been to before. For starters, the course lies at 68 degrees north latitude, planting it firmly inside the Arctic Circle, making it the most northern Lynx golf course in the world. Next, you have the Midnight Sun, for two months of the year, the sun literally does not set, giving golf lovers the opportunity to play all day and all night. Add to that the phenomenon of the northern lights, which can be seen from the course from late August through mid-October when the course closes. And you can see why it's been on my bucket list since the 18-hole course opened in 2015. I can't wait to see it in person, but getting there is no easy task. After three separate flights, I land in Evenes, Norway, where I get a car to drive the final 125 miles. I don't mind. I love road trips, and to be honest, this is one of the most beautiful drives I've ever taken in my life. And as T.S. Eliot so eloquently pointed out, the journey, not the arrival, matters. The road to the course is windy, with an impressive series of bridges and long, stretching tunnels that burrow through the hills. I'll find out later that most of these roads are under 15 years old and were built to eliminate multiple ferry crossings. So as a result, I arrive in just under three hours. And while you can't tell with 24 hours of daylight, it's late and we're exhausted. The course will have to wait until the morning. After a good day's rest, I head to the course where I get a chance to speak with Frode Hove, the managing director of Lofoten Lynx. He's a seventh generation Norwegian and it's his family's farm that most of the golf course resides on today. Talk about the genesis of Lofoten Lynx. When I was 15, a friend of my father who has been in Scotland, he's been in the, seen those courses in Scotland. He saw the landscape fitted to or look the same as the landscape here. Finally presented this idea to my, uh, my father. And it took a while. There wasn't any funds. It was the first golf course in Northern Norway. Uh, but then I, st I started up the project again in, in, in 97, 98. Um, we got some little bit of funding. So we did a very small six-hole course to prove that it was possible. And then six years ago, we got the money to build an 18-hole uh, course, a proper one, we think. Lofoten Lynx has always kind of been about one thing. Can you talk about that? The idea always been to, to use this beautiful place, the lights, the midnight sun, the landscape to create a nice experience, you know. You know something unique, something really special. Historically, this region was known not for golf or really any recreational activity. What did they do here to make this place famous? This region of Norway is, is all about cod. It's, we've been exporting cod from this area since the Vikings almost. The dry cod from uh, Lofoten is protected as a brand, like the Champagne. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very long history on it. So you can't just come up here and make some dried cod and call it Lofoten cod? You can't, no. Now, business idea number 17,000. <laughs> Scratch that. Can you describe the experience of playing here? I want to hear what you say after you played here, because it's always fun to hear. We look at it every day, so... But I think that if you, when you get out on hole number 13, green, and you, if you still haven't got it then, you would never get it. You have to experience the, uh, the beauty and the, the landscape. So I think one, one person said it was like uh, being in church, it's about communing with nature. 
If you know me, you know that I also believe that golf can be very spiritual, and I have for years. So with that in mind, it's time for me now to worship at the altar of Lofoten Lynx, Norway. When you tee off on hole one, you understand what is going to be the rest of this round. Because you have one option, are you going to try to reach the green, or are you going to lay up? And that's more or less how the whole golf round is going to be. It's trying to tempt you to, to do something. So uh, if you're a medium golfer as I am, it's, uh, it's smart to lay up, but it's not so fun. It's more fun to try. I was relieved to have a good shot off the first tee. Sometimes it's the hardest shot because it sets your mind up for what's to come. And as I walk the hole, I realize what's coming is perhaps one of the most beautiful golf courses I've ever stepped foot on. A lot of credit for the course's beauty is this stunning location. The rest of the credit can go to this man, Jerry Mulvihill. He's the superintendent for the course and has been an integral part of the course's expansion to 18 holes. It's designed by Jeremy Turner. We're, we're following his plans, but I suppose day to day things are changing and you're seeing opportunities and you know, I stick a tea in here and a bunker in there, so it's, it's kind of very organic, um, but it's something very different. Look, this place is going to be changing for the next, how many, hundreds of years. They're still working on St Andrews, they're still working on Belly Bunyan, it's constantly evolving. That's golf. The second hole is the signature hole, which usually comes on the back nine, but I'm quickly discovering that the term usual does not apply here. Golf has this, this element of nature. It's, it's always a part of the game. And I think we, what we've done in Lofoten is that we've done it to the extreme. We pushed that side of golf to an extreme that maybe hasn't done, been done anywhere else. It's just amazing. Everything is golf, it's wildlife, it's flowers, it's the ocean, it's the mountains. It's, it's just crazy. There's nothing like this in the world. So let's talk about the seasons. The golf season starts around 1st of May and then mid-October. You know, seasons are very different. You're kind of on site for eight months and you're disappearing for four. Winters here can be brutal. Um, the first couple of years it was scary. Jeez, it was really, you know, because you leave here and everything's kind of, you know, it's looking sweet. You're happy going away and then you come back and it's just dormant. And the first couple of years, it was like you were starting all over again. But I suppose we're very lucky in that we're right on the Gulf Stream. If you follow the same latitude as us to Canada, Alaska, you would only find permafrost. So you wouldn't grow, it would be possible to grow anything. But because of the Gulf Stream, it heats up to this part of the world. So it's possible. that's why it's so green here. Since 2015, you know, it's getting better and better every year. It's, it's maturing. So I think we're just on the limit where it's possible to create a really high standard golf course. Uh, and we tried to be honest to make it a proper golf course with the design and how we built it. So we, we really gave it an effort to make it a nice experience. Your first ranking was? In 2016 we ranked number 51 in Norway and a year later we moved up to number 20 and then last year we were number one. And I can see why, because there's no bad hole. Usually there's at least one hole that feels like a puzzle piece jammed into the wrong spot, but not here. Here all the holes flow together like they were meant to be exactly where they are. You know, I can remember the first time coming up here and um, you just knew, Jesus, this is something special, you know. They reckon golf was founded in St. Andrews, it could have been founded here. You know, we've had people up from the RNA and they've said the same thing. It's, you know, it's, it's a special place. What are we looking at, Jerry? So this is, uh, we got two Viking graves here. One here, one over. What, what year are we talking? I suppose it's what, 9th, 10th, 11th century. Wow. Uh, Finishing up my round, I can't imagine there's anything else that could make this course any better than it is. Or can I? You talked about September being a special time to come. Yes, September is beautiful because then it's dark enough at, uh, at night so you can see the non lights. So you can play golf in daytime and you can see the non lights in the evening. At the golf course is the, the best place to see the non lights. One of the best in the world, actually. 
It is amazing being down in Hole 13 and meeting people at one or two o'clock in the morning. They're, you know, everybody, it's, just, it's heaven, it's heaven. It is Nirvana, it's paradise, it's, it's just a feeling. That's what it is. There are very few episodes of Adventures in Golf that I wish to return to, mostly because of the sheer difficulty in getting there in the first place. But as I make the journey home from this one, I already ponder the idea of coming back. Back for the beauty, back for the solitude, but mostly back to see the other side of this course, the side under the Northern Lights. <laughs>